Jones. Percy Julian. Percy Levon Julian was born on April 11, 1899, in Birmingham, Alabama. His mother was a school teacher and his father was a railroad mailman. Education was of the highest importance in their household. Julian attended elementary school in Birmingham, Alabama, and then attended high school in Montgomery, Alabama. He graduated high school from the State Normal School for Negroes in 1916. After graduation, he moved to Greencastle, Indiana, where he attended DePaul University. The university placed Julian on a probationary period. He took additional classes at Indiana Ashbury Preparatory Academy run by DePaul. The university did not feel that Julian was prepared to attend college. Along with his additional course load, Julian worked at a fraternity house to help pay his tuition. Despite having to balance a full schedule of work, Julian became an honor student. He graduated Phi Beta Kappa and became a member of the Sigma Chi Honorary Society. He also graduated at the top of his class. Julian was the class valedictorian, but he was denied entry into graduate school because of his race. Even though Julian was brilliant and successful, he was still affected by racism. He would become a chemistry teacher at Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee for two years. His next move was to Cambridge, Massachusetts to attend Harvard University through an Austin Fellowship in Chemistry. Julian took advantage of the opportunity to shine on the graduate level. He showed his brilliance by graduating at the top of his class and receiving his master's degree from Harvard in 1923. Racism reared its ugly head once again in Julian's life. He was denied teaching positions at the predominantly white colleges. They claimed the students wouldn't be able to learn from him. Julian accepted a teaching position at West Virginia State College for Negroes, where he would teach chemistry until he accepted a position at Howard University as the head of the chemistry department. In 1929, Julian accepted a fellowship to travel to Vienna, Austria to earn his PhD in organic chemistry. He graduated with a PhD in 1931, then returned to the United States to become head of the chemistry department at Howard University. He later returned to DePaul University as a chemistry teacher. He would begin working on the synthesis of physostigmine with Dr. Joseph Pickle from Vienna. Physostigmine is a drug that Julian used to treat glaucoma that is made from the calabar bean. Julian and Pickle worked together for three years. In that time, along with synthesizing the calabar bean, they published 11 articles in the Journal of American Chemistry Society. As a result of the publication of Julian and Pickle's work, at the age of 36, Julian was a world-renowned chemist. Once again, racism would confront Julian. After his success in his research with Dr. Pickle, he was denied the position of the head of the chemistry department because he was black. Frustrated with the academic world, Julian took a position with the Glidden Company as a chief chemist and director of the Soya Product Division. He was the first black person to be hired as the chief chemist and director of the Soya Product Division. The Glidden Company expected Julian to use soybeans to make paint and other products they produced. He developed a flame-retarded aerophone that was widely used by the U.S. Navy in World War II. In 1935, Julian moved to Chicago, Illinois after he married Anna Johnson. He would use his genes to help develop male and female hormones using soybeans. The hormones were used to help pregnant women from having miscarriages, and it was also used to fight cancer. He next used the soybean to create an inexpensive version of cortisone. He was able to help many people around the world find pain relief. In 1950, the city of Chicago named Julian as Chicago Win of the Year. Later that year, the new home he brought was set on fire by a racist pyromaniac. Within a year, Julian's family survived another terrorist attack. Dynamite was thrown outside his young daughter's window. Julian and his family were not welcome in the new neighborhood they lived in. No matter how many achievements he gained, Julian was still not good enough for the white residents of Chicago. In 1954, he started his own company called Julian Laboratories to produce synthesized cortisone. He later discovered that yams were more effective in producing cortisone than soybeans. Julian opened a laboratory in Mexico City, Mexico called the Laboratorios Julian de Mexico. They used the Mexican laboratory to cultivate yams and shipped them to his Oak Park laboratory in the U.S. Julian sold his company to Klein and French, a pharmaceutical company for $2.3 million. He would later establish the Julian Research Institute where he continued his research until 1975, which was the year Percy Julian died. 
Julian received several awards for his amazing achievements. He was elected to the National Academy of Sciences in 1973. He was the first recipient of the Paul's McNaughton Medal for Public Service. In 1990, he was elected to the National Inventors Hall of Fame and he received 19 honorary doctorate degrees. In 1993, the Postal Service commemorated Julian with the stamp in the Black Heritage Commemorative Stamp Series. Lastly, a street was named after Julian in the city of Greencastle. Julian was courageous, persistent, brilliant, and innovative, and an example of what true success is. He endured open racism that could have negatively affected his career. He decided to take his life into his own hands and managed to change the world. Ladies and gentlemen, essentially I'm going to talk with you about three plants. Three marvelous plants that make the words of the psalmist come true and ring true again. Consider the lilies of the field. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet Solomon in all his glory was never arrayed like one of these. Dr. Percy Julian, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, visit www.ontheshoulders1.com.